Hey there, it's Mindy, and today I have another furniture makeover to share with you. I'm also excited to share that this is a collaboration with Julia at the channel The Mug Life DIY. Julia started the Furniture Flipping Challenge earlier this year and has been sharing some amazing furniture flips. So I will be sharing the link to her channel and the playlist for this challenge in my description box, so be sure to check that out. Let's get started. If you saw my kitchen makeover video, you probably noticed this cabinet didn't quite fit in. It's originally from Target and looked like this. I had added the bottom shelf and wheels, painted it gray, and added that stained wood top a few years back. I wanted to give this cabinet a more modern look, so I started by removing everything. I took off the doors to make it easier to paint and change the look. And these clear rubber pieces were easy to remove so that I could take the glass out of the doors. The hardest part of this makeover was removing that wood top. I could not find our crowbar, so I ended up using a flathead screwdriver with my mallet to pry off each piece. I guess that means the adhesive worked really well. After lots of lifting and hammering, I finally got all the wood boards off, and aside from a few gouges, the top was mostly intact. I did make a new wood top using plywood, the same way I did for my kitchen island, and I wanted to give you a closer look at making mitered corners. So I cut the plywood to fit over the top, and I'm going to frame it using this pine lattice molding. My miter saw is getting repaired, so I'm using my miter box, and I started by cutting the end of the lattice at a 45 degree angle. Here is how the angle should line up with the corner of the plywood. And when cutting the length, be sure to measure starting at the long end of the trim piece. I added a quarter inch to each end to account for the thickness of the trim. And to avoid having to fill nail holes, I decided to just glue the trim to the plywood. Just be sure to go by the recommended clamping time and this works just fine. For the base, I removed the bottom shelf and I wanted to change out the legs, so I used my jigsaw to cut the original legs off. I just used my speed square so I had a straight edge to follow for a nice clean cut. Of course I had to clean the cabinet really well to prep for paint and I did lightly sand as well. But before I painted I added support for the new legs using some 1x4 pieces I had on hand. I just made a few pocket holes and attached the wood underneath. No surprise that I am painting this cabinet black. I tried a new paint brand this time, but it wasn't my favorite. It went on really smooth, but what I didn't like is it dries to more of a dark charcoal color than a true black. If you like the chalk paint look, I would recommend it, but know that if you don't use a clear coat over it, it does not look like a true black. And you'll see that in just a minute. A quick fix I had to do was covering up the inner backing piece. You can see here the paint didn't stick as well, 
even though I did sand that part. So I used this contact paper from Dollar Tree, which is super easy to cut and apply. I also use this to cover the shelf, which you'll see at the end. Here you can kind of see what I meant about the paint color, but after I applied the polyurethane, the sheen helped to darken it. I've been wanting to use hairpin legs for a while now, and I got these on Amazon. I just marked the holes and pre-drilled, then attached these with one inch wood screws. Here is my favorite part of this makeover and that was updating the doors. Cane is another material I've been wanting to use in a DIY project. I'd seen this done on the channel Jamie and Sarah, which I will link to, and was confident that I could do it too. So once I had that grid removed from the door, I cut the cane to size, leaving about an inch on the sides. I've seen people soak this in a tub, but I found it easier to just use a spray bottle to wet the cane with water so it's not so stiff and you can move it around. I used my staple gun to attach the cane to the inside of the door right along that trim. And to do this, you'll want to pull it taut on each side, tack it in place, and then add staples all around along that trim. And once this dries, it will be nice and taut. Once I was done, I trimmed off all the excess and was able to add those rubber strips back in for extra security. After attaching the new wood top with more construction adhesive and reattaching the doors, here is the final look of this modern furniture flip. I am so happy with how this makeover turned out and I hope you enjoyed my process. Go ahead and hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and feel free to subscribe for more home decor, DIY, and tips. Don't forget to check out Julia's channel in the description and go ahead and check out the playlist for more furniture flipping ideas. And as always, thanks for watching.